Omori, but it's real life. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! Oh no! You took a bite of Squala! We gotta get him back to life! Life jam! Alright, this is the only way we can save him. Let's hope that giant Kool-Aid life jam man was right. All right, here goes nothing. Ugh. Oh my God, it must be sealed with titanium. The squirrel is gonna die. Uh, uh, yes, we can bring him back. Let's hope this works. <sighs> I hope that man was right. <sighs> I guess that life jam guy wasn't lying, my friend. Omori, an indie RPG created by Omo Cat back in 2020. It's one of those games that I've always wanted to play and I bought it back in 2020, but when I started playing it, I get to the first hour and I'm just like, I don't know, I can't keep doing it. But today was the day I decided to just grind through it and I'm so glad that I did. If you're new to the channel, my name is Squala and I've been playing games that people consider perfect. I've been going down this journey recently trying to find things that will expand my mind and really question what I think is a great video game. So we're gonna break this video down into gas. Yes, gas. G is gameplay, A is art, and S is story. Before we talk about what makes Omori gas, I want to make sure we're all on the same page because maybe you haven't played it yet. Omori is a shortened Japanese term for the word hikamori, which means that they are socially awkward or socially unavailable. And this is precisely how you feel when you first start the game of Omori. You're alone in a white room with nobody near you. The development process for Omori is similar to the game itself. It was a mess. It took many many years for them to get enough money and development issues all figured out for this game to officially release in 2020 on PC and Mac. And the release was a success. They won awards at DreamHack and eventually releasing on console in 2022 and blowing up over a million copies sold worldwide. And the hype just keeps on going for this game. It's even got its own manga that's coming out now. It just released in June. I think it's three chapters deep. That's pretty insane to me. And it really has me thinking, why do people like this game so freaking much. So let's get into Omori's gas. So I want to tell you guys my experience with the gameplay and what I think about it as a whole. The gameplay in Omori is similar to the JRPGs of old. You do turn-based fighting and you walk around, run into random enemies, leveling up your party and trying to keep everybody alive so they don't turn into toast. And that is the how you, that's how you die in this game. You turn into toast. Now let's talk about the party members. We got Omori, obviously the guy, the main guy. And then we got Kells. He's kind of annoying. He's supposed to be annoying. I actually kind of liked him. I don't usually like annoying characters, but I do like him. Then there's Hero, his older brother. He's like the support role. This, I actually didn't like Hero at first, which is weird. And I'll, I, Hero might be my favorite, so. And then the final member of the party is Aubrey. She's like the hard nose, like tomboy. But Aubrey's cool. I, it does a lot of damage, really important. I like Aubrey's character. I actually like all the characters, but that's, that's for later. Also, there's a rock, paper, scissors, shoot mechanic where your character can be happy, angry, or sad. Now, this mechanic is used throughout the game in the beginning is pretty simple but it gets more complex as you fight stronger enemies and they can change it and you can change it it, it turns into a really complex game of rock paper scissors shoot it's actually pretty fun i enjoyed it specifically when i got into this basement with with these bears with with like a hundred bears I, I had to sit down for a second and be like oh do i have to fight all these and yes you have to fight all the bears every bear all the bears it was a lot of bears anyway a little ptsd but there are moments in the gameplay that are really fun. That fight was a very long, strenuous fight, but we had enough power to get through it, and it felt really rewarding after completing the rock, paper, scissors, shoot battles. Omori's gameplay is really nothing that's like mind-blowingly different. Like, it didn't step out of the norms of JRPG. It kind of plays into them, and I think that the gameplay part of Omori is exactly what it needs to be. It doesn't try to break the barrier with its gameplay. It's pretty stock in terms of that. But I think that was the right decision in this game. I think making the gameplay like too complex could have really thrown this game in a different direction, making it like a little too hard at times because the story is like something you really want to focus your attention on. So the gameplay is executed, in my opinion, perfectly for this game. We're going to move on to the A, the art. The art in Amori is absolutely one of the most fantastic pieces of gaming art in the world. Yep the world i'm going to i'm going to stamp on it. it it's a pretty game it's it's very pretty but not as pretty as you if you hit that subscription button partner Psh.
This is probably my favorite part of Amore, and it's the sound design, the music, the production, the composition, whatever you want to call it. This game was sonically perfected. It's going to be up there with Undertale, in my opinion. There's songs in here, especially the moment when you're riding on the planet Pluto and you're vibing out, just like cruising. I, I would sit there for like 30 minutes. Okay, not 30 minutes, but like a decent amount of time, just like, doo. You know, just, just hitting it. Whether you're in the dream world, the real world, or in these scary places in the game, the sound is absolutely immaculate in your ears. I mean, I was feeling some type of way. You can tell that this game started off as like almost a webcomic or had some sort of vision or inspiration from like an anime, webcomic, manga, because you really feel it with the cutscenes when you're going through the different worlds, when you're traversing time and space. It's hard like to say it's bad from an artistic perspective. I mean, if anything in this game carries it, it's the art. I do think that is probably my favorite thing in the game. The music, the sounds, the pictures, the animations, everything that they did in this limited space to create such a vibrant, thriving world with color and not color, it, it really is a testament to the skill of artistry. Okay, I think you get it now. I really like the art in this game. If you don't like the art, please let me know in the comments. I, I would be very curious to hear your opinion about this, whether you agree with me or disagree, hit that comment section. Let me let me know what you think. The story in Omori, oh, it kind of has a little rhyme to it, is something that I was not expecting. I heard it was like a horror psychological game. I had no idea. The story was blank, blind playthrough from the start to the end. I had no clue what to expect. I just knew it was weird. I knew that this game had like a cult following, but the story is something that I think we all should experience once maybe, especially if you're young growing up and maybe even even if you're old and, and you've gone through something in your life, I think this story can speak to you uh, at a spiritual level. It's, it's some real stuff. But let me get into the nitty gritty because I actually have a lot to say about this story. The story in Omori is a tale about a boy who is dealing with a lot of emotional problems. I mean, the feelings he's having, it's, it's a lot, especially when you're a teenager and growing up and you might have done something, you know, not so good. You don't know how to get rid of all these feelings that you're having. It's hard. Hard, especially when you're young, you don't know who to talk to. When you're having a traumatic experience, you just kind of bottle it up and you find ways to cope. And that's what Omori is about. It's about the main character who I named Rat, but also goes by Sunny. Uh, I'm gonna call him Rat though. So Sunny is now Rat. He goes through an emotional battle. He's facing his deepest, darkest secret and you're watching what it feels like to just have something gnaw at you constantly. The guilt, the hurt, the pain, and most importantly, the sadness and isolation isolation you feel when you're carrying trauma. The game starts off in what is called the white space. It's almost like limbo. It's like the space between his dreams and reality. And you shortly go into his dream world where you do most of the gaming. Like that's like where the RPG elements are. It's where you have your team, your friends with you, and you guys run around and you fight things. And you run into these cool quirky characters. There's Space Boy and there's Sweetheart. And then there's tons, I mean, tons of side characters throughout, like just some fun quirky moments. I laughed a few times, I'm gonna be honest, I laughed. The characters in the game really fill out the world and they really help make the story feel more alive and more dreamlike because you are in a dream world and they do add that element of like, okay, this, this can't be real. Now the real world is where you make decisions that I just found out recently that affect the ending of the game or a effect. And I just found out that there's multiple endings. So I'm gonna show you guys my ending at the end of this video. Let me know what ending I got and what other endings that you got. And let's compare, because I have no idea. I didn't look. I'm kind of just gonna see what the community says and what you guys say back to me. The real world, is where you get to experience what it's like to be rat with his friends. I mean, you go out, you see that there's like something wrong. You find out these like dark secrets that are slowly getting peeled back and you kind of start to put the pieces of the puzzle together that Mari, who is your sister, is dead. And you don't know why she's dead, but you put those pieces of the puzzle really quick. At least for me, when I figured it out, my, my brain went, what? <gasps> Whoa, like wildest reaction. I wish I had my camera on. I wasn't expecting that. It was a crazy twist. And you know, this is the stuff that when video games execute properly, I see why people are like, oh yeah, this game is perfect. Cause this is a topic that is definitely hard to execute. And if you mess this up, it will just look bad. Like it would be disgusting, like distasteful. So the way that they just 
performed in terms of like the stories playing out and the twist, it, it really does do justice to the topic at which Omori is trying to talk about. And that is depression, anxiety, trauma, and all the nasty things in the world that we don't talk about a lot of. The last point I wanna make about the story is just how when you interact with different characters in the game, there's moments that occur that will just stick out in your brain. And I have one in particular I would like to show you guys. This moment right here. So we're walking down the path, you know, we're vibing and we hit this toll and you're like, hey, Mr. Gator Man, uh, could you please like let us through? And he makes us spin a wheel and a wheel and a wheel and he ends up charging us like five, like a thousand clams to get through. And then I go back a couple feet. I like walk back and I find that there's a way around all this for free. Now, ain't that just like a life lesson right there? You know, sometimes in life, you got to take the long way. You got to go through the scary dark cave and you'll get around the other side with a lot more experience and you'll you know you won't have to spend all your money just to like try to get a head start on somebody like it's such a beautiful little story element and there's tons scattered throughout the game so i really encourage you to actually go back and play omori for the first time if you haven't done it and if you have maybe it's been a while maybe just crack it open again i don't know you might just find something new because there's tons of stuff in this game and if you 100 percent of the game well you win and my closing after thoughts here guys is like this game is something we always should enjoy and play and i recently saw a video about a father who lost his 13 year old daughter to sausage side um I know I can't say the word I, on YouTube. And, um, you know, that really was like, damn, like, you know, he felt like in a connection to this game. And that's what's beautiful about video games, man. If a game can make you feel a little bit better, you know, if it can help you through a grieving process, if it can make you not feel alone, you know, then this game's about being alone. It really provides more value than just anything else than like I can say, like a score, you know? So that's all I gotta say. Closing thoughts, man. Omori, a great game. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And the next game, let me know in the comments below, what do you wanna see me play? An RPG, something with more action, something with more I don't know anything really I'll play any game you want put it in the comments below wait I, oh wait no don't leave yet because I still have my ending here at the end of the video I would never looked up what the different endings were or what ending I got I was saving that moment so in the comments we could discuss it and maybe you guys got different ones or what one I got was it the good the bad or the middle I don't know but let me know in the comments and if you guys have not played the game uh this is going to be the very end of the game <laughs> So do not watch this part at all, or you will spoil the end of the game for yourself. Final spoiler, this will ruin the whole game if you watch this part. All right, so if you're watching it, let me know and enjoy the ending that I got. Peace out.